Hey guys, this is Chris Velasco with Engadget, and I'd like you to join me on a super quick tour of iOS 9, the public beta, as running on an iPad Air 2. Now, if you've been keeping tabs on the situation, you'll know that Apple really only unveiled it for the first time a few weeks back at WWDC. But we do have a public build here that's more or less ready for consumption. So let's go ahead and take a look at what it brings to the table. Now, if you're anything like me, you might have noticed a difference already. That is the fact that Apple has gotten rid of Helvetica New as the system font and replaced it with a chunkier font called San Francisco, which first made its appearance on the Apple Watch. Tiny design note, but something I, as a typeface nerd, uh, am, am actually sort of impressed by, but we'll leave that for later. Uh, since we are on an iPad Air 2, let's go ahead and we'll uh, double tap the home button here. This is the revamped app switcher, and it functions exactly the way as the app switcher always did, with one key difference, and that's the fact that these app cards, as you see, all sort of overlap each other, which means you'll be able to squeeze more apps into a single view and therefore get in and out of them just a little bit faster. So one of those touches designed to save you a little bit of time, and it's actually sort of appreciated. Uh, let's jump into Safari here, and I can show you something that uh, iPad users will get to enjoy, I think, pretty thoroughly. If we swipe over from the right edge here, we've got these l this list of applets. They're all basically uh, first-party Apple apps designed to work within this smaller framework. So if we were reading you know, Edgar's story about Call of Duty, uh, and I wanted to take a note about that, I could jump into the Notes app, <laughs> wherever that might be at the moment here. There we go. And uh, we're going to put aside my definitive list of karaoke songs and add a new one and talk about, uh, sure, I don't know. Call of Duty is great. Anyway, you get where I'm going with this. While we've got the keyboard up, quick note, we do have uh, new cut and paste uh, discrete keys sort of living here in the corner next to your word suggestions, uh, which is great because you no longer have to press and hold the screen to figure out what exactly it is you have to do uh, next. What I actually really love about this keyboard, if you uh, take your two fingers, which you fortunately cannot see because I could probably use a manicure, let's drop them on the keyboard here. The keyboard goes blank, and we can actually get some really fine-grained control over the cursor. So as you can see right now, I'm selecting text, but if I'd rather, let's, let's throw some more text in there. If I want to edit this nonsense word, just drop those fingers in there and move that cursor really nicely in the middle of that word. Um, dropping your thumb on screen and sort of trying to figure out, you know, how many microns to the left or the right does it take for me to edit this word I'm in the middle of it was always one of my least favorite things about iOS, and I'm glad to see they're finally changing that, at least for the iPad. Now, here's a neat trick that you're only going to be able to do on an iPad Air 2. Let's jump out of notes for a moment, and let's say I want to jump into the calendar. I want to add something to my, uh, my list of things to do for the day. If I want to get a better grip and sort of interact with two apps at the same time, I can grab this little bar here, pull it over, and here we go. We're entering split view, which splits focus between two apps 50-50, although you can sort of play with that a little bit if you want. You don't get too much control over that, but uh, you do get two separate panes, two separate apps running at the exact same time. You can interact with both of them uh, c completely independently of each other. The one time that's not really the case is when you want to add something and requires you to punch in text. Uh, that's because you're obviously not going to want to type into two apps simultaneously. So the full screen keyboard pops up, shifts focus to whatever app that you uh, invoke the keyboard in, you do your thing. I've added my event called Vision. Add that, and we're right back to where we started. Uh, it's a really slick implementation, and really what gets me more than that is the fact that it runs so smoothly. Uh, yes, it does run only with uh, certain Apple first-party apps, so they've got the advantage there. But in my admittedly limited amount of time testing this, uh, it's been rock solid. So really, really nice work there. Uh, let's jump right back out to the home screen and continue. All right, still with me? Let's take a look at how search works. Uh, if old habits really do die hard, you can pull down from the top of the screen and voila, you've got your traditional search bar. You also have your Siri app suggestions, which pretty straightforward stuff, right? It looks at the apps that you use most frequently and displays them here for you for quick access. Let's jump back out to the home screen. If you swipe to the right from the home screen, though, this is your expanded search view, and I suspect this is where Apple wants to spending a fair amount of time. So same app suggestions. You do also have your contacts ranked by recency. So I've spoken to Anthony most recently. That's why he's right there top left. You've also got a nearby panel, which sort of ties into Apple's revised approach to mapping. So let's try restaurants, for example, to give you a taste of how this all works. There's a, loca <laughs> there's a location, rather, uh, 9th Street and Broadway in New York City. We also have 
a slew of restaurants listed here. They're all uh, culled from Yelp and plotted around us. And let's go ahead and show you really the best thing about Apple Maps as it stands right now. So here's a restaurant called Cafeteria. If you notice, there's a little bus icon there now. So we finally have transit directions. Um, it's a pretty crucial thing to have if you live in or commute to a city like New York or Philadelphia or Washington, D.C. Uh, I think a few other cities are supported pre-launch, but that will change, obviously, uh, once iOS 9 launches officially. And there we go. There are our uh, transit directions. It wants me to take the R up to Times Square and then take a 1 back down. That seems that seems silly. I don't think I'm going to do that, um, especially because it's it's on 18th, so very, very close by. Um, we are seeing station skip, though, and this is the first time I'm actually seeing these transit advisories. So Apple will sort of figure out where there are little hitch, uh, little hitches and hiccups along the lines and uh, sort of get you to where you're going uh, without too much headache. So this, I'm, I'm glad we got to see that. That's not something we'd normally uh, come across on, on a good day anyway. Uh, there's a back to search button up here in the corner. I'm not sure we can see that, but uh, that'll actually bring you back to the last app you're actually in. So it's a nice little touch, and I'm glad they, they do that. It does sort of make your trail of breadcrumbs a little easier to follow. And obviously down here, you might have noticed our news results. News, obviously, a big focus for Apple now as well. Let's not jump into it from there. Let's actually fire up the news app proper. All right, so this is what a news story will look like if you're one of Apple's sort of favored content partners. They've worked with a handful of news providers like the New York Times and CNN and Bloomberg Businessweek to sort of develop a format that makes news look really good. This is probably one of the more laid back designs, but it does have the sort of classic New York Times headline font, a uh, nice big photo and a really well reported story that I'm actually going to read later. So let's go ahead and heart that for future reference. Now, Apple News sort of requires you to pick a couple outlets that you like along with a couple genres that you might like to sort of get a sense of the news that you want to see here in the For You section. And it basically just dumps all these stories into a flipboard style grid that you can sort of poke through at your own leisure. If you go into favorites though, this is where you sort of see all of the partners that Apple has teamed up with and the stuff they put together. Uh, some of it does look absolutely fantastic. I'm not a huge fan of CNN, honestly, but CNN's work with this digital news format is honestly, it's gorgeous. Uh, I cannot wait to see more stories like this. I wonder how much extra work this requires from a newsmaker. Um, obviously, they wouldn't use this sort of format for every news story out there, but uh, design is something I, I take very seriously, and especially with regard to news, it can be dry. It sort of can be um, inaccessible for some people, but I feel like good design sort of helps bridge that gap. Uh, so that's something to pay attention to down the road. Here is your look at uh, some of the content providers that are aligned with Apple right now, along with the topics and genres of news that you like to keep track of. And you can search. I want to give you really quickly a look at what a non-optimized uh, sort of news experience look like. So let's go to our own uh, Engadget here. Um, this, is, this is basically what you get. It doesn't display any of our photos. It's a, This is the hands-on that I'm going to put this video in as soon as I'm done. None of the photos uh, display within Apple News itself. I have to jump out into the browser, which leaps up from the bottom and does work pretty well. So, I mean, credit where credit is due. That, uh, that sort of transition isn't too jarring, but um, I really can't wait to see what Apple News looks like when it's really, really ready to go. Now, there's just no way we're going to be able to get everything new in iOS 9 into a single introductory video, but it's pretty clear after seeing what we already have that Apple has poured a ton of time and energy into making sure this beta doesn't really feel like a beta. And it makes sense why. This is the first time they've done a public beta build for a non-point version of iOS. So we've had public betas for 8.3 and 8.4, but iOS 9, that's a big jump. To their credit, it runs incredibly stably and incredibly smoothly to the point where I don't know that I'd recommend it as a daily driver, but those of you who will take the leap, and there will be plenty of you, I'm sure, shouldn't encounter any huge headaches. Um, even if you do, Apple has said we're going to see several more beta updates before iOS launches later this year, so I don't think you'll have any trouble finding a way to get by. Uh, we'll continue to play with this version of iOS and whatever versions come our way, so until then, I am Chris Velasco, and thank you for watching.